Good evening and welcome to News Review. A local man has been sentenced to seven years in prison for a multiple stabbing that took place in 2011. 28 year old Anthony the Bama Costa was found not guilty of attempted murder, but guilty of wounding with intent to cause grievous bodily harm. The incident dates back to June 2011, when a stabbing in broad daylight left a man in his mid 20s with serious injuries. The victim was stabbed repeatedly in the back and abdomen in Cornwall's parade with what was believed to be a screwdriver. Anthony the Balma Costa was charged with attempted murder and wounding with intent to cause grievous bodily harm. He pleaded not guilty to the offences and was put on trial. According to the Balma Costa, the fight resulted in the men rolling around on the floor and that was how the victim received his injuries. The jury found him not guilty of attempted murder, but a 7-2 to two vote from the jury found him guilty of causing grievous bodily harm with intent. The 28-year-old has already been in custody for 16 months and was represented by Thomas Hillman with Ishbel Armstrong and James Inane acting for the Crown. In the Supreme Court this morning, Mr. Hillman said it was an isolated incident and the Balma Costa has shown exemplary behaviour whilst in custody and hasn't sought bail. But Judge Barrington Black, who has been presiding over the case, says five stabbings does amount to a repeated assault. And he found it difficult to accept his remorse because the Balma Costa denied the facts of the case. Judge Black sentenced him to seven years. David Cameron sent a message of support for the people of Gibraltar on National Day, praising the enormous dignity shown in the face of months of pressure from Spain. The Prime Minister said the government and people of Britain stand with Gibraltarians calling for an end to the unacceptable border delays caused by the Spanish authorities. In a video message, he spoke to 10,000 people at Casemates and many more watching live on GBC. I am delighted to be able to take part in the celebrations of Gibraltar's National Day. Britain and Gibraltar have a long and proud history. For 300 years, we have stood together as one with our shared sovereign. Today, your flag flies over the Foreign Office in London. The people of Gibraltar have faced the pressures of recent months with enormous dignity. Let me assure you that the British people and my government stand with you now. Our relationship is solid, sure and enduring. On this Gibraltar National Day, the British government wholeheartedly supports your right to determine your political future. As I've said before, we will never agree to any transfer of sovereignty or even start a process of negotiation of sovereignty without your consent. And I wouldn't want us ever to go down that route. Gibraltar has been British for 300 years. Let's keep it that way. And as we celebrate today, let us all remember that Spain is our neighbor and thousands of Spanish people are welcomed by you to work in Gibraltar. I know many of you have close family and friends in Spain. The world is an unstable place. Gibraltar is not. And that is why we want to see day-to-day -day matters dealt with through dialogue and not in unacceptable border delays or other actions or rhetoric. I have called upon Spain to work with your government and ours to find solutions to the difficulties of recent months. Today, let us look to the future and to a confident, flourishing, secure Gibraltar with good, constructive relationships with all its neighbours in the region, north and south. That way, everyone wins. So enjoy a great celebration and party today. Happy National Day, Gibraltar. David Cameron has said the UK has not made any progress on de-escalating the war of words with Spain over Gibraltar. The Prime Minister told the House of Commons on Monday that the UK should not only continue to defend absolutely to the hilt Gibraltar's right to decide its own future, he said the UK also wants to see good and strong relations in the region as well. The Prime Minister said he was sure that everyone in the House would welcome Gibraltar's National Day, as Britain and Gibraltar share a sovereign and a future together. Meanwhile, the Chief Minister welcomed leaders of the British Overseas Territories to Gibraltar on Monday. They were invited for the first time ever to attend the National Day Rally. They attended a pre-joint ministerial council at Number 6 Common Place in preparation for the meeting all the overseas territories governments will have with the UK government at the end of this year. 
There was present in Gibraltar for National Day were Hubert Hughes from Anguilla, Bermuda's Craig Cannonier, Orlando Smith of British Virgin Islands, the Cayman Islands' Alden McLachlan, Ian Hansen of the Falklands, Reuben Mead of Montserrat, Simon Young of Pitkin, and the Turks and Caicos' Rufus Ewing. The Liberal Democrat MEP for Gibraltar, Sir Graham Watson, called on the European Parliament to join him in expressing solidarity with the people of Gibraltar. His intervention in a debate on the rights of third country nationals to cross EU borders was met with hearty applause. Sir Graham told the Parliament the rights of 30,000 full EU citizens were being systematically and unjustifiably restricted by Spain and asked it to express its outrage. President, we just debated the issue of third country nationals crossing EU borders. I have 30,000 of my constituents whose right to free movement in the Union is being systematically and unjustifiably denied. And since today is Gibraltar's National Day, I hope that you and the House will join with me in sending a message of solidarity to the people of Gibraltar, a message of dismay uh, at the border controls being imposed, and of outrage at the intemperate comments of Mr. Garcia Margallo. And a Spanish MEP has responded to Graham Watson's statement. Luis de Grandes Pascual says that Graham fraudulently bent parliamentary rules to raise the Gibraltar issue. Although the president of the European Parliament then pointed out Mr. Grandes Pascual had brought up the issue again himself. This is a point of order, a very brief question. Mr. Watson fraudulently used the rule yesterday regarding the sensitive issue of Gibraltar and Mr. Watson along with the Conservatives have also raised uh, an offensive issue and I just wanted to respond to what they were saying with the blue card so I'm appealing now to your fairness and authority to simply say that there is a problem with Gibraltar and there is obviously dialogue between the, the authorities in Spain and Britain but what is also true is that the Spanish government is trying to solve the situation uh, regarding contraband and money laundering um, by adopting necessary measures. So we need to have dialogue to solve this. We don't need to have populistic uh, comments from these people in the United Kingdom. Thank you. Okay, vielen Dank, Herr Pascual. Thank you very much, Mr. Pascual Grandes. Now, uh, Indeed, uh, this was not an, uh, an agenda issue. So, as uh, president and for each uh, vice president, it isn't possible when uh, somebody uses a blue card in order to pose a question to a speaker. Of course, we can't block that becoming some sort of political propaganda instrument. However, uh, what uh, um, of course, uh, we can't stop that, but it might be better to not continue that type of debate or uh, respond to a response or to a question of that nature. So uh, uh, I uh, gave you the floor, uh, but uh, to speak about something that was on our agenda right now, but you spoke about uh, Gibraltar, but that's something that involves Spain and the UK, and that is not part of our debate at this moment. There's still no date for the visit by European Commission experts to the frontier. According to news agency Europa Press, Brussels is waiting for the Spanish government to tell them when they may come. It says EC sources have declined to comment on whether the delay is due to differences over the remit of the mission. Spain at first said the experts would have to investigate Spanish concerns like the artificial reef as well as the frontier controls. But earlier this month, an EU spokesman clearly stated the investigation would center only on frontier-related matters. Europa Press quotes unnamed EU sources as saying the mandate is very clear. The experts will investigate the frontier controls and the smuggling of goods like tobacco. The forthcoming EC visit has done nothing to mitigate the frontier queues. Yesterday, there were reported delays of up to four hours to enter Gibraltar, as the Guardia Civil, bolstered by special forces, stopped every vehicle for between five and eight minutes. Ashley Fox says he hopes the European Commission will use the good bits from this week's report on online gaming to progress EU law. The Conservative MEP for Gibraltar chaired the committee writing the report, which he thinks constitutes significant progress for the regulation of online gaming in Europe.
At present, different European states regulate online gaming differently. Ashley Fox believes progress will have been made when the EU requires, among other things, national regulators to talk to each other, and when it demands that addicts who are banned in one country are prevented from accessing gaming websites elsewhere in Europe. Well, at the moment, the gambling laws are a patchwork quilt of different regulations. Our ultimate aim is to move towards a single market in both gambling and online gambling, but that's going to proceed in a number of small steps. And my report made modest progress towards that aim. Ultimately, it would mean that if you got your license in Gibraltar or in Britain or any other nation state, that would mean that you were free to practice in the whole of the single market. Now, I accept that's a very long way off. And the report recognises that, at the moment, gambling is recognised as a special type of economic activity. Every nation state is entitled to have its special rules. The but is those must comply with European rules on the single market. A significant number of MEPs aren't happy with the way gaming operates in certain countries in the EU, including Belgium. Earlier this year, Fabian Picardo told Brussels Gibraltar is the Silicon Valley of online gaming. That way to maintain the highest standards of regulation in the EU and in Ashley Fox agrees the ROC is doing very well here. Well, Gibraltar is well regulated and it has a free market uh, and a bit like the United Kingdom, it works well. But we do have some very odd regimes across the EU. For example, in Belgium, if you want an online license, you must own a physical casino. Now that is a restrictive practice. It has, owning a casino has nothing to do with whether you're a fit and proper provider of online gambling services. So what the report calls for is for the Commission to enforce EU single market rules, to bring infringement proceedings against those nation states that are flagrantly breaking the law. Balancing the rights of citizens and the interests of gaming companies is challenging but very important. A Tory MEP says this week's report constitutes a significant step forward for consumer protection. The Commission asked the Parliament for its opinion and that is what my report is. It's the formal response from the Parliament to the Commission saying this is what we want. And as I said at the beginning, we make modest progress. We are taking small steps towards a single market. I welcome the adoption of the report, but if you want to be critical, you can go through it and find plenty of silly stuff, but that's just the nature of politics in this place. The report on online gaming in Europe has been submitted to the European Commission, who will now consider what changes might be made to EU legislation to ensure the EU does indeed function as a single market. And we'll be back with more of this week's news after the break. Welcome back. A proposed amendment to the Crimes and the Criminal Procedure and Evidence Act will create two new offences, stalking and stalking involving fear of violence or serious alarm or distress. The aim of the bill, which will be taken at the next seating of Parliament, is to fulfil government manifesto commitments on protection from harassment and to criminalise hate crimes. The provisions of the law are being expanded to place local legislation on harassment on par with the UK. Other sections allow for injunctions to protect people from harassment and a new offence of harassment of a person in his home. The bill further sets out new police powers to enter and search premises in relation to these offences. The government has thanked Equality Rights Group GGR for its input into the hate crimes provisions of the bill. Officers of the Royal Gibraltar Police have arrested and charged two local men and a local woman for a number of drug offences. On National Day, Roy Byers of Eight Tower House, Moorish Castle Estate, was arrested for possession and possession with intent to supply eight grams of amphetamine, a Class A drug. In a separate case on Wednesday, officers of the RGP Drug Squad arrested 55-year-old John Trinidad and 35-year-old Joanna Farsoon for the possession and importation of two grams of cocaine. They appeared before the magistrate's court and were bailed out in the sum of £500 each. In other news, 10,000 people enjoyed the music of, among others, 10CC, Texas, Ollie Mers and Emily Sunday. 
crowds gathered early for the second Gibraltar Music Festival on Saturday, which proved to be a huge success and catered to all ages. From the moment the gates were opened, those first in line who had been queuing up since 7 a.m. to get a prime spot literally rushed to the main stage to secure their place for the 12-hour extravaganza. More than 20 acts ranging from upcoming local bands to rock giants from the 70s and 80s entertained a wide range of festival goers. Although there had been apprehensions beforehand because of the heightened political tensions with Spain, in the end the police's confidence that the event would pass off peacefully proved well founded. Radio Gibraltar had a stage which featured a number of local artists including Guy Valerino and recent Battle of the Bands winners Paragon. Up and coming UK band Propellers also took to the stage here as did rock legends 10cc. There was also a chill out zone and a circus stage with the event very much geared towards the family. The main stage too featured local acts Holly Bohaya, Metro Motel and This Side Up. The Gibraltar Music Festival proving a great platform for local talent. Yeah, it seems like we've taken a step up. I mean, obviously the National Day Rock Concert is just an amazingly huge thing in June, but then to be asked to play here at the festival, to be voted in, makes it even makes it that much more special. So yeah, it's definitely an amazing experience. Um, really good. It was really nice. It was nice to get the crowd started at the beginning, you know, and hopefully it'll continue on throughout the day. So it was really good. I really enjoyed it. The international lineup included Laureja de Van Gogh, Lawson, Level 42, Texas, Oli Mers, and Emily Sanday. Uh, it's basically a rock show. You know, every time we put on a live show, we pride ourselves on the, the musicality. Uh, and we, you know, we like to think we're a pretty rocking live band, so yeah, come along. If you've not seen us play before, I think we like to win a lot of people over with our live show, and I think we do that a lot, so. It feels really good. I mean, we've had so many fans for such a long time. I mean, next year is the 25th anniversary of Southside. It's when we release Southside. Um, so, yeah, it feels really special to have been going for such a long time and to, to still be relevant, I guess. So, Gibraltar's great. Loving it. Um, love Jib. It's been good fun since I've been here. I haven't really done too much. Uh, we got off the plane, came here. Um, but it's, it's been good. Met the minister, uh, which was cool. Um, had some good food, and um, here at the gig, excited. Um, but we, you know, I wanted to, to put a good set together today. Just have some fun. I want the crowd to enjoy it. I want them to have a good time. You know, I'm on stage for over an hour, so it's going to be entertaining and fun. I hope they will have a good time. That's, that's all I try and do really is entertain. An old school entertainer, so I try and have fun on stage. And as long as they enjoy it, that's all that matters. So far, I've loved it. I mean, uh, the reception when we came was lovely, and uh, we've seen the monkeys all around so far. So I'm looking forward to getting out of the hotel and, and really seeing what it's like. For me, music is a very spiritual experience when I'm making it, when I'm performing. So I try and give that to the crowd. I just we all we try to do is try and lift people, and hopefully they go away feeling feeling happier, or feeling more inspired. People are often quite surprised at how energetic the show is because we really get into the songs and. I love to sing as loud as possible. Um, but yeah, there are moments where it's very intimate, so hopefully we'll kind of bring the audience up and down and, and they'll come on the journey with me. Despite rain early on Saturday morning and an overcast period throughout the day, spirits remained high and to the relief of festival goers, the weather remained dry. Oli Mers entertained the crowd with perhaps the most energetic performance of the evening, while Emily Sanday brought the house down as she led the crowd into a sing-along to some of her hits from the past year. The reactions from the stars themselves proved that they won't soon forget Gibraltar and were likely to see them here again. Tickets for this year's Jazz Festival are now on sale. The lineup features both local and international artists and is headlined by pianist Jules Holland and singer Melanie C. The first Jazz Festival last year was held outdoors and in summer, with its second year now seeing it move to the Queen Cinema in late October. Christina Cortez asked organizer George Fosso how this change had influenced the development of the event. Jazz um, festivals are, are normally geared at attracting tourists and people to come to 
to the Gibraltar in this case uh, when it's off peak. And last year we did it in July wh when we normally have tourists anyway. So um, and, and closed, obviously, because in October we can't risk having it open air. And uh, it was either this or um, St. Michael's Cave. And we had a look at this and the acoustics are great and uh, the it's, it's a pretty good condition. So we're just finishing off some minor work that needs to be done to prepare it for the festival. And in terms of the lineup, you've got a combination of artists who came here last year, such as the Dan Moretti Band and local musician Kirsty Almeida, and newcomers to the jazz festival, such as, of course, Jules Holland. Yes, Dan Moretti will be doing a different material this year, and so will Ellie Macias, and Kirsty will come over with her new album as well. And in addition, this year we have the Soulmates, um, who have become very popular in Gibraltar lately. So we're having them in an open air venue because uh, their type of music is the type of music you want to stand up and listen to and get you moving. And myself, I have uh, um, the regulars that come to my jazz nights um, and I have a couple of singers joining in as well. We have the jazz workshops with the idea of encouraging young musicians to take up jazz as well. And um, well, we have Jules Holland who is not strictly jazz, he's uh, rhythm and blues and uh, um, very popular and he's coming along with M M Mel C who is a popular <laughs> figure as well and Ruby Turner as well and Lu Louise Marshall so there's a lot of variety and something that a anyone can will accept, it not has to be a jazz fan strictly. No? GBC has revealed its TV schedule for the autumn. The schedule includes some new programs and the return of others. The first installment of a two-part documentary on the current tensions with Spain aired on Thursday. Viewpoint returns next week, while Talk About Town, co-presented by James Niche and Richard Cartwright, will start again later this month. The weekly magazine show, now called The Hub, will broadcast live on Wednesdays as from October, with documentaries on ghost hunting and natural history also in the pipeline. Also, as of this week, iPhone and iPad users can keep up with local news on the go with our free GBC News application. An Android version will also be available. The app, which may be downloaded from Apple's App Store, brings you the stories featured on GBC's website, updated in real time. You can catch up with recent editions of GBC Television's News Watch and News Review programs by going to the video section of the app, and there's a link to GBC News Twitter feed. The contact tab also allows users to send a photo and a message to our news team. For the rest of this week's news, you can also head over to our website, gbc.gi forward slash news, tune into Radio Gibraltar and GBC Television throughout the week for the very latest local news, and you can also follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Thank you for watching. Good night. Thank you.